Hello viewers. First of all, I welcome you to the stage of Geological Society of Assam. I am Rasmi Mala. This lecture is, a, is prepared for BSc student. It is a part of lecture from lecture series of Geological Society of Assam. Today I am going to discuss a very complicated and crucial stage of our embryonic life. It is gastrula. Why it is so crucial? Let's see the entire process of gastrulation. Now, the content of the topic comprises gastrulation that are defined, that is the definition of the gastrulation, importance of gastrulation, morphogenetic movements, two types of morphogenetic movements, epiboli, emboli, different types of emboli, and at last I summarize the major events during gastrulation. Now, let us start with importance of gastrulation. During embryogenesis, gastrulation stage is, gastrula stage is crucial. Why? Because at this stage, cell movements starts. The cells of the embryo move and take their appropriate position inside the developing embryo. As a result of cell movements, three distinct germ layers are formed. Each germ layer will later differentiate into different tissues and organ systems. All these events takes place during gastrulation are of irreversible nature. Here I have to add another importance of gastrulation. It is that the stage before gastrulation is blastula stage where the developing cells what we call blastomeres are pluripotent stem cells having tremendous capacity of self-differentiation and self-renewal. It means they have the potency to form each type of body cells. Today lots of experiments are going on with these stem cells leading to the discovery of regenerative medicines, regenerative therapy to treat the diseases like Parkinson's that is very common today, Alzheimer, spinal cord injury, diabetes, stroke, etc. Therefore, during gastrulation, monitoring of movements of blastomeres towards their future destination is of immense importance so far as stem cell research is concerned. Now, in this slide, see the stem cells which is extracted from blastula and ultimately it forms different organ system like liver, kidney, uh, nerve cells, blood cells, muscles, bones, etc. Now, before we go discuss, go through the discussion of gastrulation, let us discuss the successive stages of a fertilized egg. After fertilization, the egg undergoes a series of mitotic cell division, what is called cleavage and enter in modula stage, that is many cell stage. Next to this, cells so formed are arranged on the periphery to form a ball-like structure, what is called blastula. Cells of the blastula is called blastomeres and central fluid filled cavity so formed is called blastocyl. Here you see in the figure, the many cell stage morula and then cells are arranged on the periphery to form a blastula with outer blastoderm layer and inner blastocyl fluid filled cavity. 
Now we proceed to gastrulation. Before that, here is a mammalian blastula, what is called blastocyst. Here, the, this is a clear picture. It is shown here. That is a fluid-filled cavity blastocyl, then a blastoderm layer. And due to rapid mitotic cell division, there are a group of inner cell masses formed. This is the successive stages of a fertilized egg. After fertilization, it is zygote. Then zygote transformed into a morula. And then it is a blastula with a blastocyl cavity. Then it transformed to a gastrula. And at the end of gastrulation, we obtain three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Now we proceed to gastrulation. What is gastrulation? Gastrulation is a dynamic process. It is controlled by intrinsic forces. During this time, migration of cells of organ specific areas from the surface of single layered blastula to their prospective position in the interior of embryo takes place. Thus, the single layered blastoderm give rise to a double layered or a triple layered structure, what we call diploblastic or triploblastic respectively, with three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Now, let us discuss about the movements of the cell, what is called morphogenetic movements. The movements of blastomeres of organ specific areas from the surface of blastula to their prospective positions is the most important event of gastrulation. These movements are called morphogenetic movements. Why it is called morphogenetic movements? because it results morphogenesis that is structural arrangement of the cell. These cell movements transform blastula into a gastrula. Now morphogenetic movements are of two types. One is epibolic morphogenetic movements what we call shortly epibolic. Number two, embolic morphogenetic movements. Shortly it is embolic. Now let us start, start with epibolic. Epibolic movements occur only on the prospective ectodermal blastomeres. Okay, it is restricted only to the prospective ectodermal blastomeres. These cells have inherent property of flattening and expanding in the anterior, posterior and lateral directions on the surface of embryo. As a result, entire gastrula is gradually covered over by ectoderm. Here in the figure, you see, epiboly is going on and cell become flattened and it spread gradually all over the outer layer of the developing embryo. This is epiboly. Then emboli. It refers to the movement of cells from the surface of blastula to the interior of the embryo. That means embolic movements are concerned with the inward migration of prospective mesodermal and endodermal blastomeres from the surface of blastula. It extended along anterior posterior axis. Now, what is the difference between epiboli and emboli? I repeat, the epiboli in epiboli. Cells spread over the embryo 
and form prospective ectoda, while in emboli cells move interior to the embryo to form prospective mesoderm and endoderm. This is the difference between these two type of movement. Now, the pattern or what we call mechanism of embolic morphogenetic movements are different in different animals. Here I describe only some common types of embolic movements. These are invagination, involution, ingression, delamination, concretions. Now we discuss one by one. First it is invagination. Invagination is the best means of embolic morphogenetic movement. It is found in amphioxus, most of the amphibia and birds. It is the infolding of a layer of external sheet of cells, prospective endodermal cells towards the blastocell. As a result, a new cavity appears, what is called archenteron. Archenteron is the fusor gut of the animal. The mouth of the cavity is called blastopore. Here for your knowledge, I mention one thing that in case of deuterostomes group of animal, it becomes fusor anus while in protostomes it becomes fuser mount. In the figure you see invagination is going on. As a result the original blastocell it becomes shrink and a new cavity archenteron is formed. This is invagination. Next to this number two involution. Involution is the inward movements of prospective mesoderm and endodermal cells along the external margin of blastoporeal lip in such a way that it spread over the internal surface of the already existed cells. It occurs in moderately telolycytolates. As it is shown in the figure, yellow colored cells, they move to the interior and lie just below the existing layer of cell. It is involution. Then ingression. Ingression is more interesting and dramatic. It is the process in which a group of cells situated at different parts of blastula ingress into the blastocelic cavity and arrange themselves into distinct layers of mesoderm and endoderm. It occurs in higher group of mammals, reptiles and birds. Here in the figure A you see pink color cell originally they are scattered here and there but now they group together and enter in the cavity. In the figure B, blue color cell, they also scattered here and there, but now they come out to the, towards the cavity. This is ingression. Then delamination. In this process, mass separation of one group of cells from other groups occur. Here, not a single cell, a group of cells. They separated out from other group. This is lead delamination. In mammals, separated cells arrange themselves below the trophoblast to form a layer, what is called hypoblast. Here, blastopore is not formed. Another best example of delamination are found in teleost fish where the endoderm, mesoderm and notochordal cells are separated in this process. This is delamination. 
Then the last one is concretions. The movement of sun masses towards each other from two bilaterally situated areas. It is something different. It comes from two bilaterally situated areas and they are fusion into single cell mass in blastopore areas. It is called concretions. Development of feeders of bird follows this type of cellular movement. Here in the figure you see cell A, A, B, B, C, C together they advance towards the cavity. Then I want to summarize the major events going on during gastrulation. What is the major events? Three germinal, primary germinal layers get differentiated as ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. In this stage, nuclei become physically active and synthesis of new kinds of proteins starts. Metabolism is also altered. As a result, oxygen consumption increases. At the end of gastrulation, it enters in the next phase of embryogenesis, that is organogenesis. This is all about the process of gastrulation. Now, I have some suggestion for you. You can go through these books, original books of embryology. Then I conclude my lecture here. Thank you.